Now we're getting ready to adjust the front brakes. So what we're going to do is we're going to look down inside here and see a few components. This is the rotor and the rotor has a pad on the inboard side and it has a pad on the outboard side that squeeze up against that. The pad on the inboard side is adjusted by putting a three millimeter wrench through that screw right there and the outboard pad is adjusted by putting a five millimeter wrench into the backing of the outboard pad. And now if we look up top there, right at the two rotors, or the two pads on either side of the rotor, I'm going to adjust these so that they squeeze in on that rotor. There's the one on the outside, there's the one on the inside. So they're now tight against the rotor. The rotor cannot move. We're going to tighten up the pads on the rotor on the right side, just like we did on the left side. Here's a three millimeter Allen wrench in through this screw and a five millimeter wrench on the outside. And if you look down in the gap, you'll see the two pads and we're going to tighten them up onto the rotor. There's the inboard one, here's the outboard one, until the pad cannot move. Now with the inboard and outboard pad tight against the rotor, we have to put the cable through the fixing screw and tighten it. But what we have to do first is make sure that there's no slack in the cable. So if we look up here and follow the cable all the way up, there's a little bit of slack up here. If we come down the cable here to the cable doubler in the middle, we see some slack there, some exposed cable, and down here. If I pull this cable all the way down here at the brake, I'm going to take all the slack out of those parts. I'm going to pull it, that's going to slide up in there. This one up inside that. I'm going to pull on this cable and it's going to make this one go up inside the bottom of the double right there like that and there's no slack up here. I'm going to do it on the left side and then I'm going to pull the cable on the right side and also take the slack out of that cable as well and make it fit up into that cable doubler like so. There's no exposed cable from the brake handle through the doubler and all the way down to this point. Now we can insert the cable into this fixing screw and make it taut and tighten it and then the only thing we have to do at that point is just back off the two pads from the rotor and the brakes are set. So to put the cable in here we're going to unscrew this screw a little bit. There's a nut on the back side of this right here and there's a position or a place where the cable can slide through. Okay, It's going to go through there. We're going to pull it down this way and we're going to make it nice and taut like that and then we're going to tighten up this fixing screw. All right, we're going to do the same thing on the right side. Loosen this fixing screw to create a little space between the nut there and the lever. Push the cable through. Pull it all the way through so there's no slack at all. Tighten that fixing screw up so the nut squeezes down on the cable so there's no slack cable anywhere. And now all we have to do is go back to these pads again with your five millimeter one on the outside and the three millimeter wrench on the inside and back off those pads a little bit until you just begin to see a slice of light between the pad and the rotor. And then if I lift this up just a little bit here and spin it, the rotor is free to spin. One of the last things to do with front brakes is to make sure both wheels are being stopped evenly. And that means that these pads on this side have to be gripping the rotor the same way they are on the other side. If they're different and one seems to spin a little bit easier than the other one does when you push the brake lever, you can adjust the pads here just as we did with a 3 millimeter and a 5 millimeter. You can also adjust how much that cable is being pulled by this little barrel adjuster. You can unscrew this, which will tighten up one brake versus the other brake. So there's a number of ways to adjust this and make sure both wheels are being stopped evenly. And I can show you more detail. To adjust the front brakes and make sure they pull evenly, we're going to grab the front brake standing in front of the machine so it's on the, it's, it's the left brake lever. And we're going to pull the machine forward to the point where the rear wheel's off the ground. We're going to let it go very slowly and see if it pulls in one direction. And it does. This brake on the right side releases faster than the brake or earlier than the brake on the left side. 
To make an adjustment, we're going to go down here to this barrel adjuster, right there, where the cable housing goes into the brake, and we're going to back that up about one or two turns, and we're going to repeat this. Clamp the brake on, lift the rear wheel up, let it go, and it comes down straight. That means both wheels are getting squeezed by the brake system simultaneously and equally. If it moves one way or the other, just adjust the barrel adjusters and you can straighten it right out. Now the rear brake is exactly the same caliper as the front brakes and this is usually set at the factory where you have a little bit of space between the rotor and the pads. If you need adjustment, once again, you would take this 3 millimeter wrench on this side and the 5 millimeter wrench on this side to adjust those, but I think it's already set, so I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze the brake lever and let you see the pads gripping onto the rotor. So that really doesn't require any adjustment at this point, but if you had to, you adjust it exactly the same way as you do the front brakes. There are several adjustments that can be made to the Zoom disc brake caliber to ensure that your rotor is in the center of the gap. Here you can see the rotor is in the center of the gap. If the rotor is not in the center of the gap, there are two screws that hold the caliper to the bracket. Here's a 5mm screw here, and here's the other 5mm screw right there. If you loosen these two screws, you can actually move the caliper back and forth so the rotor can be at different positions in that gap. To set this rotor in the middle, you want to put the rotor with the screws on the bracket loose. You want to set the rotor in the middle and then tighten the, the, the inside pad with the 3 millimeter wrench in this hole and the outside pad with a 5 millimeter wrench on that hole so that they squeeze the rotor in the middle. Then tighten these two bracket screws there and up here on this side. That will hold the rotor now in the middle of the caliper gap itself. Once you have these secured, then back off your three millimeter pad by this screw inside here and the five millimeter one over here and creating a small slice of light between those pads and the rotor that will keep your rotor in the center and keep your pads from touching the rotor as you rotate. If for some reason you cannot move this far enough to get the rotor away from the caliper itself, there are two extra washers down here on the outside of this screw. You can take that washer and you can actually put it on the inside of the dropout to move the entire bracket system over towards the middle of the wheel. With those procedures, you usually can find a, a good way to get that rotor right in the center of that disc brake caliper gap. Each one of the brake levers has a pin that is used to lock the brake or put it in park. So I squeeze this brake lever in, I push this in, it's got a spring loaded on it, and release the brake lever where I'm holding that pin in and it stays there. That locks the brake so the strider will not roll anywhere. If you want to release that pin, you just squeeze the brake lever and the spring pops that out and now you're free to roll.